two and two. Yes, sir. How are you, Billy? <laughs> it's just a trip, you know, how life is and careers and all that. And I've known about Billy for years or so long. And I've been an admirer of what he does. Likewise. But it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, when I heard we could do this, it was like, yeah, please. Great, great. Yeah, and I didn't so know I was going to be with someone when they said it was you. I thought, well, not only, it's kind of a double thing. We had a chance to hang. Yeah. And then also I get to see some of your playing, which is a supremely unique. You have a package deal that I think few guys have. That you sing, your rhythmic, uh, supreme rhythmic capabilities, not only with your voice and your bass, too. And singing, ba singing and playing bass, that's, that's the tough one. I can strum guitar and sing all day, no problem. But singing and playing bass. We did that in Frankfurt. One of, one of the first hangs uh, with Billy, and it's always work under the umbrella, the work yeah. umbrella, and it was Frankfurt Music Messe. And uh, we had a few friends, and we were hanging out in the, in the lobby there at the hotel. Remember the piano player? Yeah, yeah. And you amazed me. I mean, every song that anybody called, you were on it yeah. with the guitar and singing and playing. I'm like, whoa. We both know a lot of music. We've been around, you know, for, exactly. for a few weeks. A lot of younger players get into this, this uh, tunnel vision of they're only into this one thing. Yes. And they want to do that only, and that's, that's all they'll do and all they'll listen to. Yeah. And then they hear Bobby Darin or Frank Sinatra or Sergio Mendez, and they're, well, that's not my thing. I don't want to listen to it. And that's, that's where you're wrong. True. Great quality music is, is, goes across all boundaries. Across the board. No matter I, who I it is agree. and no matter what it is. And I still listen to older stuff. And, I'm a big Beatles fan. As huge Beatles as fan, you, yeah. yeah. Abbey Road was the first album we got. My dad got it for wow. Christmas, and it was it turned my life around. Great. Absolutely. Up yeah. until that point, I was just outside the peripheral music. My grandma was a piano teacher, and so you get to appreciate music, but not like that because they hit the core for me. They did for they, everybody, right? Yeah. It was like they pushed that button, and your life just changed. Yeah. You know, my personal story is I got sober in '87. And I came to LA knowing that I wanted to be here. I wanted to get, get my, my music thing together again. And, and I was humbled by the fact that I was in this same city with, surrounded by all these pe people that inspired me. You could go to any gig in LA and just go, wow, Stanley. There's I started hanging out with together. Stanley, yeah. Stanley yeah. Clark, who was awesome. one of, one of my guy. cats too. And came to a couple of the trio gigs at Lava Lee because oh, there was a big hang you there. And I stuff. so wanted to, bro. Pick your brain and talk, you know, you know, you know how it is. And you were just supreme command. You just blew everybody's mind. Your supreme command of you're killing on this. Your right hand, your left hand, you're killing. You're in time, you're on pitch, and you're singing. And the singing you're doing is is counterpoint, weaving in and out. It's just amazing. You, you blew everybody's mind. Thanks, man. Including mine and especially mine. So we go on tour, do the album, come back, and then all this downtime in LA, in the valley. And I could go every night to a different venue yeah. and hear these cats play. <laughs> so that's what motivated me to kind of, you know, I'm going to put a little trio together. Great. And open the real book and do some shedding yeah. uh, so as not to get stagnant and well, grow a little Playing bit. with Joey. <laughs> right? The drummer is the key, as you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. You play, get to play with a good drummer. The I've played a, a couple times, briefly in my past, I played with drummers that did not have it together and did not have time, and it was really agonizing. Yeah. And for me, I don't know if this happens to you, but when anything's wrong anywhere, I think it's me. Yeah. So the, the groove is not quite happening. I'm thinking, what, what is going on? Why me? Why right. am I doing wrong? It wasn't me. It was the drummer. Yeah. And oh man, it was it was tough. And I know it's happened to a couple other plays where you you start to really doubt yourself and mm -hmm. you start to rethink your life. You know, and it's, it, it's that severe. You know, because you're just the thing you do that you love and that's your life. Ain't working. <laughs> what do I, now what do I do? I, yeah, I, I could paint houses, I guess. I can install carpeting. I'll do something, you know. But, but and every drummer, every bass player, every artist, every human, the iris of your eye, your fingerprints, your DNA, you got this different thing yes. about them. Close your eyes and you know when it's Joey playing. And, th and they get up to a level where there's no more real competition between any of them. It's just which, which flavor would you like tonight? Mutual respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In Soundcheck, Dennis Chambers is doing a Grand Funk Railroad oh. songs, you know. 
total hard the precursors of all hard rock. I love rock. that. That was Great one stuff. of my first bands too. Oh, I love Grand to Funk. Play. Remember? That was a, a called Nothing Is the Same. Yeah, yeah. Great. Uh. Come on, everybody. We're gonna have a good time. Yeah, yeah. All that Great stuff. stuff. When was the defining moment that you felt as a musician, as a bass player, that you had made it? You know, we, we do the best to please ourselves, but you really can tell how, what kind of an impact you're making when you see others responding. So as an example, I uh, got a Mr. Big, we, uh, we had a single going up the charts. Big one. Bang, number one single, three weeks, Billboard, tough to do. You know, I'd, I'd call my dear old mom, hey mom, we got a, oh that's nice, hey, it's gonna be number one, oh that's, that's really nice. Mom, the, the record's uh, uh, going platinum, oh that's nice. Mom, we got the number one MTV video, that's oh so that's nice. good. I go, mom, I'm gonna be on the Tonight Show. What? You're gonna be on the Tonight <laughs> Show? <laughs> then she panicked. So uh, we went on there one time, and we just played and that was it. And the second time they came back to the green room and they said, uh, Jay wants to talk to you guys. Who's gonna sit in chair number one? So we got done, walked over and I sat in chair number one. Yeah, baby. On Tonight Show. And I, right there I thought, my mom is, <laughs> finally knows, oh, the, oh, you might be able to do something with this now. <laughs> I hear you. That's, uh, for, for me, something like that, you know, yeah. my father started, started watching some videos and then, then I couldn't stop him from talking. It was embarrassing <laughs> everywhere we went. But that yeah. was that was a defining moment for me. It was like my right. dad. He's yeah, really, cool. really, really proud. But I also like to think that you know there's there's still some peaks that you want to uh, yeah. be able to. Uh, there's still to many, achieve. many mountains to climb. So many mountains. Some yeah. of them personal. For me, I sit every day and work Travel and I, 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 I see that the distant peak and I'm going for it you know I'm sure you do the same yes. in, in, in one way or the other it's 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 nice that we still have a lot more adventure absolutely bro. absolutely and I don't know if you'll agree with me uh, with this too but the touring and I've been touring you've been touring lots and lots and it, it kind of gets to a point where you have to be careful for me because I start losing the luster you know I start losing the because when I'm touring with a particular band or tour, it's the same show mm -hmm. for the longest time. We might add a track or yeah. two tracks or change this or that, but it becomes, I have to be careful so not to let it have, be a job. You know? Exactly. That's really hard for me. That's the hardest part wow. for me. Interesting. You know. Yeah, for me, I, 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 I walk up on stage like it's, like it's the first time. And, and one thing that really helped me a lot in, in, in with that, in, that thought in particular was Knowing in your mind, you're thinking the crowd. You know, we did the same show last night. Right. Yeah, but that was in London. We're in Cincinnati tonight. Exactly. You know, we flew in and we're doing a show here. So these people did not see any of it. Right. And I learned a lot of that from David Lee Roth, because I watched him. Uh, Talus opened up for Van Halen the for forty shows. At every show, he would do the same shtick exactly. The fog would be on the stage, and the crew guy would walk out there and lay a joint down, and then crawl away. No, the audience wouldn't see him. And then Dave would magically. Eh, what the hell is this? Pick it up. I, you people know it. Ah! Every show, he would do the exact same thing. Yeah. And we would laugh like, all over at it again. Night. It was hilarious. So That's that, great. be able to repeat that stuff, knowing that these people have never seen it before. Yeah. That, was a, that was a big help for that. That the always keeps it fresh. The entertainment aspect of yeah. it all. Yeah, yeah. I, like to, I, I always love pedal tones. Yes. From Bach. Yes. You know that? Oh, it shows, man. Yeah. All that stuff where you keep that one note. I love that. It's Indian, too, because you always get that. Yeah. Yes. Kind of that one note going yeah. on all the time. It's a guitar thing. Yeah. You ready for us? Yes. Your bass, uh, it's a ESP. It's an ESV Limited, yeah. It's a great little company. Beautiful, like very beautiful much. company. I, I, uh, they gave me a call. I went to the shop, who's in the valley. Yep. And uh, I just fell in love with, with their instruments. It's a, it's a beautiful looking bass, but it's a five string. It's a five string. For me, I remember exactly what it was. So I was in LA, and all these cats were doing all the sessions, and occasionally I would get a call to do a session here and a session there. I was working with uh, 
with Michael Tobias yeah, yeah. in Burbank. Great. He made bases for Tim Bogart. Yes. My original Ex hero. Exactly. Me too, man. Big fan. Tim Bogart. <laughs> That's another cat. Yeah. And Jack Bruce and Paul McCartney Brilliant. and Chris Squire, you yeah. know, Tony Levin. And the list keeps going. But, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, stuff. <laughs> Great. So anyway, I started showing up more and more and I would have to tune down to uh, get the low D and the C and the B and then sometimes A sharps or whatever. Yeah. So I called Michael to buy, he says, yeah, swing by, man. I'll, I'll, I think it was a signature five string or whatever. And uh, I grabbed the bass and it just felt really good. All it is, is another octave, you know, low D, low yeah. C and the B. So it became part of what I played. Yeah. That's what the five and the six is all about. The cool. six, I, you had, I, I have a low, low B here, which allows me to play lower octaves. Right on. And then I started, I, I started playing with different rhythms on top and playing around with a couple of things here later. Cool. So it allowed me, it gave me a little more freedom, a little more yeah. than the four. Yeah, I've uh, I got a six string that I used on uh, Mr. Big Just Take My Heart. I used on a bunch of other records. But then I took one of these and strung it B-E-A-D. A lot of people are doing that. That's yeah. very cool. Move all these over one and then put the B on there. Mm -hmm. I, 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 did, uh, I did a record with Steve Vai a few years ago. I did use all that bass for all of that. Did you, uh, what, just out of curiosity, gauge-wise? Pretty you, big. I went with like a... 125 or... Yeah, like a 130 or 140 yeah. something. In an emergency, I actually did it live one time because Steve needed a B note when I was performing with uh, um, the Vai Tour one, one time. So I actually would just bend it down to a... Oh! <laughs> so it's one pair with a... And hit that low B. Insane! <laughs> so you see? Way to sneak it out of there. Yes, right? absolutely. Will is will. This space is synonymous with, I mean, I can't, yeah. As, yeah, as the, long as I've known about you and I've seen pictures and all that, this is your axe, man. It's the, beautiful. The double output, uh, something you would find really... The stereo thing. Yeah. It's... um. Getting, getting all your articulation from one pickup and then just a deep low end from the other. So when you want to get a little bit fine, you roll that low end off. Because you know a super bassy sound, you can't really, yeah. you know, you can't do finger picking stuff and all right. that. You kind of, kind of, you know, so you just roll it off now. And then you got all your articulation. And then when, you, when the drummer comes back in, whatever, and pull that, uh, this other pickup back up, it's, yeah. it's uh, got a real impact. The tone, man, your tone, it was just, I could hear cool. every note, every harmonic. You know what happens to, to us as bass players. We kind of yeah, bass players, we usually lost. get the short end of the stick. It's a, it's a, bass is really the toughest thing to, Mix. To, to bring out loud in a live situation, loud and articulated. Yes. You can hear a rumble and roar, but you can't really hear what the notes are. Right. So one of the reasons why I went to the dual amp thing. I was going to say, yeah. And it's tough, but once a sound man actually gets it, because he's got a mic one cabinet, and generally take the other one direct. Direct. And, and, it, and then now I have to trust him to mix them right. Generally, what they do is just turn the, the mic off, right, and just use the low end there, and they make you think that they're. And, yeah, and then yeah. all the all the stuff I'm doing is utterly inaudible. And I've heard board tapes where you know I'd hit a harmonic, and it would sound, it would be yeah. nothing. It was just you know because <laughs> it's just a low pickup, so it would drive yeah. me nuts. Because you can really get the notes that mid range the note is. boost, so beautiful, man. It's I a could wood, hear that's every a wooden note. tone, you know, the real middle the voice tone yes your your playing man is so important to be able to hear you're such a dynamic player and your notes there's a lot of ghost notes going on a lot of stuff going on harmonics yeah. harmonies that are put you're playing under the that's if you don't hear it, it's like you're missing yeah. out on the meat and potatoes over here i've had people ask me you know well, you know you know how did you develop your tone and I, I never really developed it i just wanted to hear the notes that was your I thing i just want to hear the notes yeah. if i can hear the notes because the right. notes are what make them, makes the music. Right. So can, you, can you hear the notes? No. Well, then, then you got a problem. Very can true. you hear them now? Yes. Okay, we're good, you know. This came from the, the, the flamenco, the Spanish thing. Yeah. In between songs, I got a jam, I would go, I would go. 